Mr. Lee. Sure. I have other questions, but it seems like it's peacekeeping day around here. So I wanted to ask you uh, that the issue of, of um, the deaths caused by cholera in Haiti and accountability or recompense or compensation for that are somehow not addressed in any way in this reply. And I, I was here when Ramos Horta spoke about the issue. It seems like it's a big development in peacekeeping under the tenure of the Secretary General. What's his view of it? Does he I not mean, view I think it as part on, on of the, the specific uh, issue of cholera in Haiti, I think our position is is unchanged, and I would urge you to read the final report, and then we can we can talk about and it. And relatedly, I just since I'm 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 unclear, but would, uh, if I'll be allowed to ask Mr. Ladsus this question, I want to ask you the question. He, while he was in CAR, it was reported that he spoke to the ambassadors of countries whose soldiers were charged with sexual abuse and exploitation. And so I tried to, um, I, did, I wanted to know whether he spoke with France specifically, given the interrelating, interrelation between uh, MINUSCA and Sangaris, uh, and the statements made in this background briefing about human rights due diligence of the UN's partners. I mean, I think the, uh, you know, the issue of sexual abuse has been raised uh, between the UN and French officials at various levels, the levels of the defense ministry and at the highest uh, at the highest level. So it's, I think they are very well aware of our, our position on the issue. In Central Africa, some have been deployed since the times of the African Union, 18, 24 months. Uh, they have no opportunity to uh, travel for rest and recreation because they don't get money. Uh, we do give uh, the member states uh, welfare money, but uh, I'm not sure that in many cases the soldiers see the color of it. So we are looking at uh, ways and means to provide them, you know, uh, for relatively cheap R&R uh, &R, uh, trips. But of course, again, it's difficult because Bangui is a very poorly served uh, airport. Uh, it's one or two planes a day, uh, and we have large constraints on our own air assets. But anyway, we're looking at it very closely and we'll see what we can do. So I will not uh, deflower the subject uh, <coughs> to peacekeepers who are spending months on end in very, very difficult conditions, you know, be it Kaga Bandoro, be it Bambari, be it Bria, I've gone to both uh, since the last year. Uh, I mean, comfort is uh, rudimentary uh, and of course uh, there is no um, how should I say, uh, distraction. Uh, no possibility to do anything to get your mind, you know, of uh, those very uh, difficult uh, living conditions. Again, it's not an excuse, but I think we owe it to our people to afford them, you know, uh, the possibility of, as I said, a better welfare and uh, try and see whether we can charter planes, you know, to uh, just give them a f some fresh air by going elsewhere. Some countries do it, uh, especially countries from South Asia. They actually send uh, national flights uh, every few weeks, you know, to uh, rotate uh, their peacekeepers for a week or two. Uh, but of course, in the case of uh, poorer countries, it doesn't really happen. Uh, so we have to try and step in to compensate for that. What about the you. French Sangaris rates? Oleg, go ahead. And your role in the Oleg. UNDT filing. Oleg, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Latsos. <clears throat> you described the situation in which peacekeepers are working in CR, which harsh conditions. Hmm? Those incidents, if there are any other ones, uh, as they come. What, what, what do you mean? Firing the uh, whistleblower, Anders Compass. What was your role in Mr. Thank Compass? You. Thank it's you. listed in the UNDT filing. It should be answered. One more, one question, please. Shouldn't you answer that? 